When Federal Reserve policymakers hold their interest rate setting meetings this summer, a big chunk of the debate will be devoted to matters outside the US. Among those are Britain's referendum on its membership of the European Union and China, the question of whether it's going to hit a serious slowdown. Observers say it's striking how much attention the Federal Reserve is now paying to developments outside the US in financial markets and global economies. And it's also making the job of understanding what drives the Fed's decision making more difficult. Global factors have long influenced US policy. Just look at the Asian financial crisis in the late 1990s and more recently the debt crisis in the Eurozone from 2010 onwards. But close observers of the Fed argue overseas events have held unusual sway over Fed policy decisions last year and this. In 2015, the surging value of the dollar and financial market turmoil in the late summer helped keep the Fed to just one rate rise in December. Similarly, the high dollar and tumbling commodity prices, coupled with worries about China's foreign exchange policies, stopped the Fed from moving in March of this year. Janet Yellen, the Fed chair, mentioned the words global, foreign and dollar more than 22 times in her speech in March. Louis Alexander, US economist at Nomura in New York, says the Fed is paying far more attention to the world beyond America's borders than it did when he was at the central bank. So the Fed has always paid attention to what's going on in the, you know, around the world. That's obviously been something they, they followed. But it's become a more important factor for the US economy now. Partly that reflects the fact that trade is just a larger share of the economy, and so when things like the exchange rate moves, it simply has a bigger effect on the U.S. economy. We're also seeing greater spillovers from foreign developments onto U.S. financial conditions. That's another important channel that the Fed has to take into account. Ted Truman, a senior fellow at the Peterson Institute for International Economics in Washington, D.C., says there are multiple factors at play. To the extent that growth abroad, especially in China, deteriorates and the dollar strengthens amid a stronger US outlook, that will act as a constraint on the Fed's scope to raise rates. In addition, deep interlinkages in global markets mean the Fed is effectively the world's central bank, Truman says. That means its rate changes transmit across global markets, potentially forcing other central banks to adjust course. No offense to, to anybody, uh, but I think we're all learning. Uh, this still at this point, that uh, much in the way of uh, consensus on how, the, how things progress, uh, how, to, how to think about these things. Further complicating Fed policy are political upheavals overseas. The obvious one now is in the European Union, where markets and economies could be destabilized if the UK leaves the EU. So one question in this area is whether uh, Brexit uh, it will amount to a systemic event and will cause the Federal Reserve to hold back. And that will, would, over time, suggest that U.S. monetary policy will want to be somewhat uh, less aggressive uh, and pay more attention to global financial conditions. The Fed has never been a central banking island, but observers say the complex relationship between its decision-making and global markets is more crucial and more bewildering than it has ever been before. Sam Fleming, Financial Times, Washington, D.C. Something strange is happening in Japan, Sweden, Switzerland and the Eurozone. Official interest rates have gone below zero and are now negative. That means some people are being...